my boys and girls, it's Mrs. Graves coming here to you from my home, reading you a story on these virtual school days. Um, this is a book called Ocean Commotion, Caught in the Currents, and it was written and illustrated by Janine Mason. So she was the author and the illustrator. And it's, a sto- it's, it's based on a true story of something that happened in the world. And I hope you enjoy this story as much as I do. Thank you. The book starts out showing you a map of the ocean currents. And the oceans have rivers that run all around. The oceans are actually connected and they flow all around the world. And here's Florida. And we are next to the Atlantic Ocean, and here's the Gulf of Mexico. And I want you to notice, you're going to see some ducks on this map. And these are the places that some of the ducks had been found. Okay. So it's very interesting how these true, these little ducks made their trip around the world. Ocean commotion caught in the currents. This is a big cargo ship and cargo ships carry lots and lots of containers all around the world and um, sometimes they get caught in big storms. Lightning flashed Thunder crashed and the wind howled through the rigging. High above the deck, the cargo container broke loose and tumbled into the sea. The ship plowed on through the night. So they probably didn't even know they lost something. So the storm's over now. The storm washed away and the sun came up on the quiet rolling waves in the wide wide Pacific Ocean. A single rubber duck plopped to the surface. The crumpled container tilted to one side and a giant bubble escaped as it sank. Nearly 29,000 bath toys shot out of the deep. They bobbed, they bounced, and bumped together. The armado of ducks righted, turned in the current, and sailed into history. Two spy-hopping humpback whales were the only witnesses at the lonely spot in the shipping lanes near the international date line north of the equator. See those little yellow blobs? Those are all little duckies. The ducks drifted through all that spring and most of the summer. And when the current turned to the east, a a few hundred near the outside edge of the flotilla peeled off in the eddies, then pushed them back toward the islands of Alaska. Look, Dad, said Johnny. Where do you think these came from? He plucked six ducks from the line. His father, a newspaper reporter, scratched his head. I can't imagine they traveled far. Probably fell off the ferry, John. When they got home, he wrote about the ducks in his column. What was left of the wayward level yellow navy sailed by Dutch Harbor, Alaska into the Bering Sea. Abroad a fishing trawler, the captain's daughter pointed. Look, Dad, the ducks we read about in the paper. No, no, said the captain. Rubber ducks could never make it this far down the island chain. Together, they watched the ducks journey on. The current 
Frigid fresh water from melted snow floated to the surface while the heavier salt water sank. They dra it dragged a few waterlogged ducks down with it like a conveyor belt on the ocean's current. Those left at the surface were squeezed into ice flows. The drift forced them endlessly towards the east and the Atlantic Ocean. Look, some of them became frozen in the water. Meanwhile, Way to the south, the thousands of ducks in the main fleet stayed their course. They turned again with the North Pacific gyra and swept further south. A bald eagle snot snatched one up with her sharp talons and delivered it to her fledglings in the high, nest high above the ground on Vancouver Island. The eagle thought this was food for her bird and she brought this rubber ducky uh, which is probably made of plastic, to feed to her baby. But her baby can't eat it. Magazines and newspapers, television stations around the world told the stories about the ducks. Beachcombers far and wide were on the lookout. They collected the toys that drifted from the coastlines and reported the finds to a scientist in Seattle. He kept track of the locations where the ducks had come ashore. As the months turned into years, the ducks floated on. The current turned to the west, riding the northern edge of the equator. It was three years since the ducks fell into the ocean. Just before they completed their first circuit of the North Pacific, thousands were caught in a powerful eddy and split. Half sailed over the horizon into the South Pacific. So half went north and half of them went south. Not much is known about the ducks that landed in the islands of Fuji, Tonga, or Tahiti. Johnny Dunging kept a scrapbook filled with articles about the ducks sighting. No one knew it was possible for the toys to float 15,000 miles around the entire North Pacific and back again. But he was sure that if there were still ducks caught in the currents, they would return someday. Every summer, Dad and his father went to the same beach to search, but the ducks did not return until the third year. Dad, John shouted, they're here, and he plucked two ducks from the rack. As soon as he got home, he wrote to the scientist in Seattle. Sixteen years later, the trail of rubber ducks was gone. Reporters and scientists gave up hope of finding more. John became an oceanographer. On vacation in Halifax, Nova Scotia, he and his family watched a fisherman unload the day's catch. John's daughter pointed to the wheelhouse. Daddy, she whispered, he's got old ducks just like yours. Bleached and battered by their Arctic crossings, seven worn-out bathtub toys rested on the sill. Hey, Captain, John asked, where did these ducks come from? We found them drifting down the straits in Newfoundland. But where they came from, that's a mystery. This mighty ocean keeps lots of secrets caught in their current. The end. So, if you look, the little boy found the ducks up here in Alaska. Here's Florida. Alaska's part of the United States. Up here. And then Newfoundland, the ducks were found over in here. So, this shows you that when you throw something on the ground, a piece of trash how it can travel, and even end up in a bird's nest. And a bird might try to feed it to his baby, and his baby could get sick and die. 
So before you throw trash on the ground the next time, I want you to think and remember ocean commotion caught in the currents. Bye.